This portion of Rocket Metal Revival is brought to you by... What's wrong? We can't go on. We had the demon's pick, but then we broke it. And now our masterpiece will never happen. We can't pay the rent because we won't be fueled by Satan. Yeah, come on, get up, get up. Come on, come on, stand up, you're all right. You guys, having some satanic guitar pick isn't going to make your rock any better. Because Satan's not in a guitar pick. He's inside all of us. He's in here. In your hearts. He's what makes us not want to go to work, exercise, or tell the truth. He's what makes us want to party and have sex with each other all night long. He's that little voice in your mind that says, fuck you to the people you hate. Now, you can stay out here and fight on the ground and cry like babies. Or... You can go in there like friends rock. So what's it going to be?
There's Dangerous Toys and Scared on Rock and Metal Revival. I like Dangerous Toys. They were cool, man. They, they were they a still fun around band. Or yeah. They done? No? They're still around. Jason McMaster, he was doing that uh, deal with that band he called Broken Teeth oh, for okay. a while. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, every once in a while he gets out a Dangerous Toys reunion and yeah. goes out on the road. Nice. Yeah, that's kind of yeah. cool. I'd like to see them. I saw yeah. them. Who the hell did I see them open for? It was back in those. Remember back in the day when they used to do those great package tours? Oh, you know, yeah. Like, well, they were like four or five. Yeah. Group, yeah. Good bands, and they'd yeah. all yeah go out on tour together. That was fun. Hey, uh, I was going to tell you. You know why? Um, this is a quiz for you. You're a big sport. It is? You're a big sports guy. Oh, yeah. Okay. I am a big sports guy. Yeah, yeah you like a lot of sports. Of, yeah. All right. Now, do you know why I, me, Red, personally, don't watch soccer? Uh, you don't like soccer, right? You don't watch it because you don't like it? No. If, hey, if I wanted to sit around and not watch somebody score for 90 minutes, I'd take Steve Reamer to the tavern. <laughs> <laughs> nice, uh, nice. We love you, Steve. Thanks yeah. for listening to the show. Hey, coming up, uh, just in a short few, we're going to talk to uh, Jason Morley. Uh, and he's got a great, great project called Metaspherical. And uh, the more we learned about it, the cooler it gets. And, yeah, uh, yeah. This is a very cool, cool. project. And uh, the first release is a song called Cloth of Ought To. And uh, a very cool tune. Take a listen to it. We're going to talk to Jason Moore. We're going to find out more about this. I think all you metalheads out there really dig this. I know the guitar players in the crowd well. Oh, yeah, for sure. Sure, for sure. So here is Metaspherical, the song, like I said, Cloth to Ought To on Rock and Metal Revival.
There's a brand new band called Metaspherical, and that is called Cloth of Autu on Rock and Metal Revival. Dude, a lot of, uh, I, I don't know how to describe it, man. I just dig the sound coming out of those speakers when I hear that song. Brand new music. Some good guitar playing, Some man. Great I'm, guitar I'm a big player. fan of guitar playing, so... And on the phone with me, uh, with us, I should say, is Jason uh, Morley from uh, Menace Park. How are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm <laughs> doing fantastic. Dude, I, I got to say, uh, I'm totally blown away by your guitar playing. Uh, you know, I hear a little bit of classical influence in there. I hear some, you know, the metal riffs. Uh, fantastic job. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Now, how does a project, now there's a lot of different players and from a lot of different bands in this uh, project. How does, how does something like this get started? Um, well, it's, it all started, came together uh, a few years back. I, I had a, a very serious brain injury, and uh, to, uh, you know, after a few years of recovery, I really wanted to get back into playing metal. I really suffered from a lot of different physical ailments, which um, sort of, I had to relearn a lot of guitar, go through a lot of trial and error. But basically, I live in a really small town called Nanaimo on uh, on Vancouver Island, and I wanted to get back into playing metal, but couldn't really find the the caliber of players to to play the music I was envisioning. So it was kind of a shot in the dark. But I've been friends with the uh, drummer Gene Hoagland from Testament since I was a teenager. He was living in since he was living in Vancouver, playing with Strapping Young Lad, and I thought it would be a bit of a shot in the dark. But why not just you know, ask him if he had a chance to record a track or two with me just to kind of get the ball rolling. And um, we laid down some amazing music, and, like, not to elaborate too much about what you're asking, but the project really kind of took on its own destiny from there. Just, I, you know, a lot of running into situations where I met this person by chance, that you know, that person here or there, and it really kind of took on its own destiny and has just really amalgamated into what it is, which is, so many great players and it's uh i'm really stoked to you know where we're at now with just releasing this first single uh, through itunes and amazon and uh, i'm sure you've heard about the the great work we're doing with the partnership we have with uh, sweet relief yeah and that I was that was my next question i had heard that you had uh, partnered with sweet relief uh, explain that to our listeners a little bit uh, well, Sweet Relief is a, is a charity from California which aids working musicians who've been struck down with either physical, men, physical or mental disabilities. And, I mean, really, just after everything I've been through, and this whole project really has, to me personally, it's been about musicians coming together and helping musicians. It just it made perfect sense to partner with an organization that could bring about help and change to people who've been through similar things that I have myself. And, you know, we really make it about something good and positive and worthwhile you know well you got a very cool guitar style using uh Thanks. i i watched the video and uh yeah the way you use your index finger like do you have to keep your nails certain certain length or are you you just using calluses on the ends of your fingers and thumbs no i, I do actually that, that the, the style of playing that i have it, it kind of originates from my i started playing classical guitar when i was a kid mm-hmm. and kind of use that that aspect of my nail and um yeah i don't know it was, it's just one of those weird unique things i kind of never really gravitated towards the pick and it it just kind of came in into my own you know it's sort of been my own trademark style if you will i, I suppose but yeah no again thank you so much i, I really appreciate it i mean there's i guess yeah you, you can hear aspects of, of classical coming coming through within that but yeah that, that's sort of the origin of that it's you know, nothing too unique to itself, but, yeah. But then you can't throw picks out to the audience. You can throw, can't, throw <laughs> your, can't throw your fingers out there. No. no I, mean, I guess you can always keep a few picks on a bike stand for good measure, but I hear you. <laughs> now, Jason, earlier you had mentioned that uh, you suffered a, a brain injury. Can you want to tell us what, what happened there? Yeah, let me give you a, a brief run-through. Um, I... Uh, we don't really know 100% what happened. I was uh, found at the bottom of a flight of concrete stairs in a pool of a lot of blood, and we we're assuming that I, I fell down. And basically, there was uh, there was a hemorrhaging blood clot inside of my inside of my head. So they had to remove about a third or more of my skull plate in order to uh, relieve the swelling. 
and the, the pressure that was going on. So, th- so that happened, and um, a few weeks went by. They kept me in a uh, induced coma. Um, a, the swelling went down. They, I, I had a second surgery. They put my original plate back in, and then uh, let me I'm going to try to keep this brief. About three weeks later, I was rushed back to hospital because I had um, green pus and different substances coming out of my head, which was. Mm. Mm. Long story short, really, due to me- medical negligence, there was a few infections inside of my head. They had to remove my plate again, which had by this point become very infected. And mm. um, basically, I was in hospital again for about another month. There was about four surgeries over this time where they were just cauterizing a lot of blood cells and trying to rid the infection. They were able to get it about 95% gone, but basically I had to leave the hospital with no skull plate and lived my life for about a year and a half, you know, sort of being a danger to myself. Oof. And, you know, they had to see that the infections were were, were going to go. And then um, about a year and a half later, they put a synthetic enamel plate in there, which is what I have now. And, you know, a long story short, I think I'm very blessed and I'm very lucky to be here and alive and doing what I am now. And, you know, like I said, I'm just, I'm, I'm very stoked and excited that I can be, working in the capacity that I am in music and, you know, be blessed and honored to have collaborated and, and you know, made really great music with, with people over the last few years and this and, and to be able to partner with, with Sweet Relief, to be able to give back. So they didn't have a metal plate available? No. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's kind of funny, the, the irony of what I do. But, <laughs> no, it, it, today's day and age, we're better off with the, the enamel plates. It's... Yeah, you know. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. I get it. Stronger than bone, blah blah blah. Yeah, yeah and 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 it's nice. I don't have to meet when I go through the, the metal detector at the airport. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's true. Hey, Jason. Jason, now, how would you describe Metaspherical uh, compared to other bands in the metal genre? I mean, you know. Um, that, that's a good question. I mean, like w- one of the, the big goals has been like in the it's a global metal project. We've got players from you know uh, India, China, Japan. Uh, Australia, New Zealand, parts of South America. And it, it's really been to take the the different subgenres of metal from around the world, you know, take aspects of that and, and sort of fuse it together. And, um, you know, sort of having people from a lot of different ethnic backgrounds and just trying try to bring together as much, uh, you know, outside subgenre influence and kind of create something that, that you know, brings... Um, you know, comes into one as a sound. I mean, I remember growing up as a teenager, I can't speak for the whole world, but um, where I grew up, the metal scene was, like, very segregated in the sense that you kind of had your group of thrashers over here, your your black metal guys, your, your progressive guys. And, and growing up, I, I always liked all of it. never really understood the, you know, the, the walls that kind of came up between people and just, like, we all like metal at the end of the day, right? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, now, what is the plan for the for you know maybe getting out and playing uh, some live dates, or do you, do you see that happening down the road? I definitely do. We're in the we're in talks about um, the possibility of doing a, a showcase performance sometime in the new year, and you know it's not the easiest. I mean, at this point, we have about twenty five people signed on to the project, so it's not easy thing to get everybody together but we'd like to get a few of the the key players together and do perform some of the music in a in a good capacity but then uh yeah i definitely do see taking it on the road um further down that with just a, a group of you know three or four musicians and, and the, the thing that i it's really exciting to me about that personally is that um in a road situation you know like like i was saying how this project has just really been about you know musicians helping musicians and coming together and doing great things. A lot of the musicians involved said, hey, man, you know, if you're coming on tour and you're coming through my city, let me know, you know, I'll come up with what you am. So, you know, th- through that, through the act of touring, I, I think a lot of uh, really, really great uh, collaborations and improvisations w- w- would come about that would just, you know, never normally happen uh, outside of it. Well, you know, I think that would be a, a great collaboration to happen at something like NAMM. Absolutely, yeah. That, that's a great. That's a great thought, you know, because you just have so many people there at, at that time. Yeah, I mean, uh, a lot, sure. you know, a lot of musicians getting together at Nam. That would be a, a great thing to get together and collaborate on. 
Um, mm-hmm. So where do you see right where do you see this going uh, in in the future as far as recording and and albums? Well, we're uh, that, that's again that's a really good question. Right right now, we're uh, promoting our our first single, Cloth of Atu, and um, which we've just released through iTunes and Amazon. Um, we have an, another song uh, planned in the works to come out in the next month or so. And um, well, really, um, the this project's been in the works for a few years, but with you know sort of the the economic hard times of music, it's it's been a, a struggle to to come up with the the funds to complete work. Basically, we were um, we've been toying with the idea for quite a long time of going into a a crowdfunding venture to, to finish it, you know, through uh, something like Kickstarter or Indiegogo. But we, we thought that it would be a much better idea to, to bring out a track and kind of test the waters and just sort of see how people feel about it than just kind of going cold into something like that. So we're just, right now, we're, uh, you know, we're, we're tr- trying to promote this as best we can. And um, so the, 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 you know, through the purchase of this single, you're helping release, um, excuse me, um, you're helping to, uh, you know, raise the money to, to complete the record and more tunes, and also um, partial proceeds from that is going to Sweet Relief to help aid working musicians who've been through hard times. So it, it's an all-around good thing, but, but that, that, I hope that kind of sums up where we're at. We're, we're in the works on a lot of things. We've got a real, lot of really great musicians on board, and um, we're just trying to create a bit of awareness right now, you know. Cool. Well, what I want to know is, you got any songs you're working on that are going to feature the cowbell? <laughs> you know what? We actually do. All right. Cool. <laughs> um, we, we love the cowbell around here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll have that one for you soon. Huh? Sweet, a sweet. Few months, I'm sure. So, uh, Jason, before we let you go, we want you one more time. Uh, tell us where the single's available. Uh, the single's available at uh, iTunes and Amazon primarily, and uh, if if you want to check out uh, Metaspherical online, the best place to go is um, our Facebook page. It's the most active, just uh, facebook.com slash metaspherical, or you can check out our website, which is uh, metaspherical. Dot com and again thank you so much for having me guys i really appreciate it you know jason i, I checked out your page too and uh, on facebook and uh, that's where i caught up on your classical guitar playing and uh, um, you're just a fantastic guitar player and we look forward to hearing more from you thank you so much woe to you O earth and sea for the devil sends the beast with wrath because he knows the time is short Let him who hath understanding reckon the number of the beast, for it is a human number. Its number is 666. I left alone, my mind was blank. I needed time to think, to get the memories from my mind. What did I see? What I saw that night was real and not just fantasy Just what I saw in my old dreams Were the reflections of my woman staring back at me Cause in my dreams It's always there The evil face that twists my mind and brings me to despair Oh!
John Gallagher from Raven, and you are listening to the Rock and Metal Revival, Brothers and Sisters, crank it up!
All right, right there is Kiss and Creatures of the Night. Uh, boy, we actually come through with enough Halloween songs to. This is fucking scary, man. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I, I'm gonna when I re-listen to this, I'm gonna make sure the lights are on. Hell yeah, yeah. Man, but uh, they, hey, that that day uh, that gig that Jason Morley's doing that Metaspherical that's very cool. Support that if you can for sure. Yeah, yeah I'm very that's very cool. Coming up next week, we're gonna have Leather Leone on the show, and uh, Chastain has a new CD out called We Bleed Metal. Hell, and, uh, and they're serious. And they're serious yeah, about it. They're not it's, screwing around. No, it's 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 liquid metal. It's that's like right. you saw Terminator Two, same thing. Yeah, yeah. and uh, we need to uh, start putting together our top ten list for. Uh, 2015 dude dude holy crap it's already that time again no yeah no also we want we want to thank our affiliates tough tough choices yeah Yeah, it really is there's a lot of good choices i'm Uh, liking the i'm liking the winery dogs the more i'm listening to it i've listened to it a few times it's uh, there's a there's still a couple songs that i that i go go past as soon as i hear the fucking piano yeah keyboard boom i skip that but yeah, I mean, eh, it's not not as good as the first one. No, the first one. And the best fun. part about it is when we do our top tens, just you and I. Yeah, uh, and our, we pick our, whatever our music's are different. The choices yeah. are totally different, so you're going to hear a lot of different music. A um, couple things. We want to thank Mega Rock Radio, uh, Robert down there. He's been really cool and been with us a long time. Oh hell yeah! Uh, we also want to thank Corey up at Uncontrolled Noise. Corey, who invented the internet. Yeah, thanks for doing that. We're going to see him again in January. He's coming down for the birthday bash. <laughs> Man, he's so cool. He's the best. He's so uh, cool. And then we want to thank uh, Coonsie and everybody at Rock Rage Radio. You guys totally kick ass. For sure. Nice bitchin'. job. Thank bitchin', you very man. much. Bitching. And uh, Tony from Kansas City, uh, Jerry would like to see that video that you shot. Oh, uh, shot It's been video. almost two weeks now. <laughs> Tony from Kansas City. He was only getting upskirt shots of, of the V. Of the like v. I said, Tony of from the, Kansas yeah, City. Of- the actual V. V, yeah. Hail to the V. <laughs> so, yeah, Tony, one more time. Stop jerking him. Yeah, yeah. Let the rest of us enjoy it a little bit, okay there, Tony? Okay. You know how to get That's a hold it. of us, rock and metal revival at gmail.com. And uh, so to end this, to end this uh, I figured train wreck, I'd get that, mo- that movie song. Oh, from the Wes Craven movie? Yeah, that movie, The Shocker. All right. Well, this is from the soundtrack. Well, it should have been from the soundtrack. Yeah, isn't that what the shot? It's the same thing, right? I you think said so. To get scary songs. Scary I, songs. I, this is the scariest song a woman could ever hear, <laughs> or a guy. Oh, never know. You never know. Never know. You I, never know. I. Uh, Caitlyn Jenner loves this song. Oh, so, until next week, don't drink and drive. <laughs> Smoke and fly. Happy Halloweeny. <laughs> Avoid the shockers. Are you ready, baby? Extra, extra, read all about it. I want to show you guys something new. Now, if you're having trouble, just get in the boner. There's something cool that will work for you
buddy. I'm going to tell you a story. You're in for a surprise. You're in for a shock. In London town streets, where there's darkness and fog. When you least expect me, and you turn your back, I'll attack. I smile when I'm sneaking through shadows over by the wall. I laugh when I'm creeping, but you won't hear me at all. All oh, hear my warning. Never turn your back on the ripper. You'll soon shake with fear, never knowing if I'm near. I'm sly and I'm shameless, nocturnal and nameless, except for the ripper. Or if you like, check the knife. of Rock and Metal Revival. If you enjoyed it, tell a friend. If you didn't, tell two. Until next time, this is Rock and Metal Revival. Hey, stop crowding us, you shit-faced cockmasters! Wow!